Until they've got 21 titles and a handful of European Cups, then for me, there's no power shift that's happened at all. I ran a blog um, just talking about United and Full Time Devils just asked me to share. I'm sure they was hitting up several vlogs saying, God, oh, blogs, can you, can you share this? Can you, um, can you share this video for us? And share it, yeah, it's not a problem. Um, and that became, do you fancy coming on a video? That moved on from, do you fancy doing a fan cam? And ultimately ended up presenting. I was on a couple of thousand Twitter followers. I'm on over 70,000, I guess now. My personal Facebook page is like 300 or something thousand. Uh, it's crazy. I only have that regret really, that I, sh I should have done my own stuff on YouTube a little bit earlier, but I think it's an absolutely fantastic platform. I think the, the things that people are doing with it, is, it's really creative, it's really imaginative, and actually it's making big media corporations and big media outlets really rethink what they're doing on this on every platform actually, not just on YouTube, as you know, Manchester United have joined this week actually. We joke about it, but United is the biggest club in the world. And I think sometimes if you're small, you have to be fast. You have to be quick on a platform. You have to get traction early. But when you're the behemoth that United are, I mean, I don't know what they're on. They was on 200,000 within a day and a half. So I'm sure they'll be at a million by the end of the month. Or in, uh, certainly at some point in March, I, I'm sure they'll cross over a million. I think because they're so large, they can just turn up late to the party and own it, I think. I always knew MMA would end up being the mainstream sport. I didn't realise that it would need somebody like Conor McGregor to make it happen. And I actually think that this, the lad that's topping the bill tonight, Menger, if he gets the opportunity, I'm not sure he could keep the belt at 125 in the UFC, but I think if he got the right fights and DJ moves up and fights TJ Dillashaw, I would not be shocked to see Menger hold the UFC belt at some stage. I think there's going to be a bit of a bit of chaos once DJ moves up, and I think if Menger can get the right fights and take advantage of that, that's going to help. That's going to help MMA in Manchester, firstly, but MMA in the UK, secondly. And I think he's got the sort of personality, maybe not to the level of Conor McGregor, because I think he's a bit of a unique, one in a once in a lifetime guy. But I think he's certainly the sort of personality and sort of exciting finishing fighter that the UK could really get behind and I hope that's what happens actually. I think United can win the league and I think we can win the Champions League but not this year. I think if Mourinho sticks around then he's only going to have stuck around because the board are going to back him and if the board are backing him then I think he will get what he wants in the positions he wants and I'm sure if everyone's a bit more patient than we appear to be at the moment he can get it done because if he can't get it done who else can get it done? I don't think there's anybody out there in world football that's better qualified than Jose Mourinho to, to take over a club the size of United and actually do something with us when he gets it. Jose Mourinho is the only one for me. And yes, it's not perfect at the moment, but we've got to suck it up and just get on with it. I would imagine that social media plays a massive part in decision making for a lot of clubs. I think the way United at least are announcing decisions is driven by engagements on social media. So if they're looking at the positive social media, they can't fail to be looking at the negative side of social media. I would hope that the board is strong enough to make decisions based on their own decisions and their own metrics, but I'm not 100% certain that's the case. I'm pretty antagonistic, or quite strong with my opinions, should I say. So they usually come back quite strong as well. And I'm fine with people having strong opinions. If someone gets abusive, I've zero tolerance for it. I'll just block you. I don't need to be seeing abuse. There's no need for that. If you want to talk to me and be civil, even if you don't agree with me and you want to be aggressive, that's sound. But if you, if you get, if you cross the line, then I just block you and there's no doubt about it. But I can handle it because I know it's not real. I know that when it's face to face, it's 99.5% positive and it's fantastic the, the responses that you get and the varied people that you get as well. Like people that you don't expect watch what you do will come up to you and say, Oh, I saw that what you did, or I agreed with what you said on that. And you're like, Really? You watch that stuff? And you're like, Yeah. I mean, and that goes for players as well. These, these players come up to me and go, oh, I saw that, or uh, there was one young player, I had pretty strong opinions on Wayne Rooney, and there was a young player I was hanging out with, and he absolutely rinsed me on Wayne Rooney. Made me change my mind on the way Rooney is with, maybe not how he is with fans, because I think he left a lot to be desired with his relationship with the fans, but what he was actually doing for some of the young players at the club actually blew me away a little bit. So, you know, there's, there's people right throughout the club. I, I spoke to Ed Woodward at the Player of the Year Awards a couple of years ago, and I went over to him and I was thinking, right, I'll try and get him to come on full-time Devils, and went over to him and said, uh, 
excuse me, Mr. Woodward, and he's like, oh, no, you are, and it completely threw me, and I was like, oh, I was like, give me an interview then, and he agreed to it, and then his secretary knocked me back the next week, so, I, we obviously have some sort of reach, it's not ideal at the moment, but, you know, I think face-to-face, -face, everyone's, everyone's sound, usually, face-to-face, -face. you get the occasional dickhead, but most people are sound face-to-face, -face. and because it's like that, it's, it's, it's easy to handle. In terms of on the pitch, City are better at the moment, they've had a phenomenal season, does that equate to a shift in power? I'm not sure. Historically, obviously, the club is, you know, without any disrespect to City, the club is on nowhere near the level. You've seen by what happened with, with Wigan last week, there was barely any news about it. And journalists are actually coming out and saying, no one clicks on it when you write about City. So I don't think you can say there's been a shift in power in terms of, in terms of the size of the club, the stature of the club, the, the resonance that the club has. There's definitely been a shift in the ability of the team. But in 10 years they've spent how much money you would you would expect if you spent that kind of money on Wigan. That you would see a, a shift and Wigan would have won a title. Leicester have won a title in the last few years. They've spent a fraction of that sort of money. Um, yes, United have spent. I've got no issue with clubs spending the money. I think people see their ass a little bit with Chelsea and City because they've done it through sugar daddies and they've not done it through their own generated revenue. But that's football at the moment, I think, and we have to just get used to it. There's going to become a point in time with transfers being 300 million euros, the way they've been for Neymar, where clubs go, I'm not paying it. I'm going to put 100 million into my academy and watch what happens. And I, I actually think that these transfers, because they're unsustainable, because they can't go on, they might be the best thing for football in the long run. Because at some point, people are going to go, I'm, I'm just not paying. When, when 30, 40 million becomes the norm for an average player, which it now has, soon 50, 60 million is going to become the norm for an average player. Us as fans, what we're putting into a club on a, a weekly, monthly, yearly basis is absolutely not touching the sides at the moment. So I think that some clubs are going to stand up, and to be fair to like the likes of Juventus, they do it very well. They pick up a lot of free transfers, they, they bring through players, and they mix that with a couple of big signings. That might be the model that a lot of people have to look to. It's not really the case in England. Everyone's just going absolutely nuts because of the TV money. I don't know how long City can sustain this. I feel like they've been built for one man. And if he leaves, which, let's face it, he's on the cards. He's never survived. He didn't survive three years at his boyhood club where he came through as an academy player. Why would he want to stay at City any longer? So I don't, I don't know how a power shift could happen until they've got 21 titles and a handful of European Cups, then for me, there's no power shift that's happened at all. Absolutely can see the Premier League bubble bursting. There's, there's no way that TV companies are making money when they have to shell out. I think it's just gone for five billion for a, not even all of the TV packages that was just up for sale recently. There is absolutely no way that's sustainable. Now, yes, I understand the Premier League's uh, a great product. I hate the word, but it, that's the, the case. It's getting... Um, it's getting big numbers in for people in the likes of the United States, in the Southeast Asia, Africa's becoming a decent market for that. But there's no way that can continue to go up. And because of the nature of sport and because of that exponential growth that everybody needs, football clubs are gonna constantly try and spend, which means that they need more money to come in through the TV rights. There's, there's no way it can continue to go. I can't believe it's, it's actually been renewed for the money it's been renewed. I don't know where the money comes from. I really don't. And at some point, those TV networks are going to say, we can buy every other sport in the world, every single race meet, every single fight, every single everything, and have four billion change. Is the TV advertising really that good for football? I can't believe that it is, to be honest. I do think the likes of Facebook can barge their way in. About 10 years ago, I know that Apple sat down with the Premier League, and at the time I was like, oh, that's interesting. The way they rent series and the way you can buy movies on there, I was like, it really made a lot of sense to me that you could see one-off TV games, one-off Premier League games being like $5.99, buy it, watch it on a mobile device, or your Apple TV if you've got that sort of thing. Premier League did that a few years ago with, was it the Golden Ticket or something was it called, I think, where you could buy individual games. So I absolutely see things like that happening. Amazon have got more money than God. They could perhaps come in for it, and that might be what's keeping the price high. The fact that these companies are circling. But outside of that, I have no idea how this money's still been able to be generated. Especially if you can go and buy La Liga, Bundesliga and Serie A. 
you can build a channel around those three and not have the Premier League. And I'm sure, I think, the TV rights in Scotland went for you know, nothing. The, the TV rights in France and Portugal, you could build a channel with all of those and just ignore the Premier League or buy highlights, I guess, instead of buying live packages and be fine, I'm sure. I totally fell into doing YouTube, if you like, and, and talking on camera. I've never had any training in it whatsoever. If anyone wants to get into it, the, the thing I would say is, is just start. If you can watch YouTube, you've probably got a device that means you can record and upload to YouTube. So just start, and just start talking about things that you're passionate about. I, I talk about MMA, I talk about rugby, I talk about football, because these are the things that occupy my mind 24-7. I also talk about pizza and conspiracy theories because those are things that occupy my mind a lot as well. And I just think I make content for myself and if other people want to watch it, happy days. But if you don't want to watch it, I honestly don't care because I like exploring these things and I like exploring these thoughts and I'm just happy that people want to come along and do that. Um, I've got my own studio in town, which is, I guess, a, a big step for myself going in the future. I want to make my podcast a little bit more professional. Uh, I look at the likes of Joe Rogan and I go, yeah, when I'm 50, I could see myself doing that sort of thing. I'm absolutely nowhere near that yet. But that's the guy at the top of the tree that I would like to maybe one day get to.